Welcome to Marrakesh, Morocco, one of the great food cities in the world. There's something delicious everywhere you look. He's been making it for 54 years. What a legend. A wall. But be careful. Marrakesh has a huge tourism industry. And there's plenty of foods you'll want to avoid. The good news is, today, along with the help of my local friends from Moroccan Food Tours, so good. we'll be showing you where to eat some of the best Moroccan food in the city. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Oh, wow, yes. From must-eat street foods, to legendary restaurants. That is the most amazing oven lamb pit you'll ever see. I mean, it's just loaded with a dozen lambs that are just skewered. You're about to find out why Marrakesh is one of the world's greatest street food cities. I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens, and welcome to the beautiful, historical, ancient, and always delicious city of Marrakesh in Morocco. We are on our way to eat some of the best food in the city, and we're about to start eating right now. Oh, it's nice and quiet in the morning. Mohamed, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Very good, very good, and you? Oh, nice, yes, yep, yeah, very good. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Oh, yeah, to begin we, the day, oh. Oh, yes. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big day ahead of us, so we need to Every be day must be, <laughs> must start with coffee. Oh, yeah. yeah That's without course, a doubt. Of course, yeah. Mm. Mm. Excellent. And so we're just actually passing through the yeah. Jim Alphanet, which is... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different vibe, actually, from uh, the oh, day yeah. time. The night. Yeah. yeah, so the morning is quite quiet. I mean, there's still so many things going on. The flutes, the snake charmers, stalls setting up, and just a continual buzz of action. Hi. And we're, we're also with Fatima. <laughs> She's a local Good guide in Marrakesh you. with yes. Morocco Food Tours as well. Exactly. Are you from, are you, are you from Marrakesh? I'm from Marrakesh. Grew okay. up in the new parts of oh, the okay, city. Oh, okay, cool. But now I live here. This is the real Marrakesh, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And where are we going first? Uh, no, actually, we're hitting what we call donuts. So okay. So nothing like your donuts, you know, like caramel, jam, and stuff. Not our style. All right. So it's going to be like savory and not sweet. So what locals eat oh, nice. either in Savory. the morning or late in the afternoon. Right now the, the lanes are quite quiet as Marrakesh is just waking up in the morning, but it's it's so beautiful. I mean, walking these lanes, the spices, the aromas, just a, a giant marketplace of, of all things. like inherited from a father to a son. The guy, he doesn't allow anyone, by the way, like to uh, make the donuts except for himself. So when he's sick, they shut down the whole place. You can see how wet that dough is. Yeah, so he has to wet his hand so it doesn't stick. And he really molds that dough into ring shapes, into donut shapes with his fingers. Oh man, so fast. <laughs> Look at how fast he makes that ring. Just directly into the hot pan of oil. Oh man, that is just true experience and skills, the way he just squeezes that dough, and the dough is wet. And as it starts to deep fry and boil, it, the dough, you can just see how it starts to puff up. It gets really bubbly, and then he fries it until it's completely golden crispy. Another version, they take the donut, uh, mash it on the inside, you can see how bubbly it is, and then drop an egg in the center. Oh, what a move. <laughs> yes, always tea. Oh, yeah, of course. With every meal and snack in Morocco. So it's always the green oh, tea yes. that we use. Okay, so green tea with the yeah, herbs. Oh, there's tea, mint, exactly. sage. That's sage, sage and marjoram. Yes. Marjoram. Nice. So there are 
three reasons why we pour high, by the way. So yes. The first is to make the foam that you can see. Okay. Second reason, to cool it down a little bit. And the third reason, the higher we pour, the more we welcome our guests. Oh, really? Yes. So it has a lot of cultural Culturally, value. It's not, yes. <laughs> it's, it has a lot of meaning. Yes, of course. Shukran. Oh man, you can see how it's yes. really, it's really fluffy, really bubbly and light. And now you need to fold okay. the paper. Okay, fold the paper. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Uh-huh. And squeeze it. And squeeze it, really? Yes, it helps to oh. reduce the oil and also okay. flatten it for you. Oh, nice. So you do want to flatten it. Exactly. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. You can see how that oil just soaks through the paper. That's a good sign of a donut, though. And then you kind of flatten it like that. Is that the? And now you can. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. You can feel how airy and how bubbly that that dough is, though. Oh man, that's a unique dough for sure. All right, and then you eat it together with the dough. You like it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a savory donut. Really bubbly and crispy, but the inside is a little bit gooey, yes, spongy. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Straight and up. That's uh, the name of the uh, donuts, by the way. It's sponge. It's oh. sponge. Oh, okay. Yeah. It is straight up a sponge. <laughs> mm. A crispy sponge, though. And then definitely, you do want to drink that with tea. Yeah, because the donut is definitely a little oily and greasy. So to wash it down with a tea is a perfect combination. And then for the egg one, oh, look at that one. Oh man, that is crispy and greasy and tasty. Oh yeah, that gives it a different texture that adds that, that egg protein to it. Everything is just like cemented together with the egg, plastered, it's plastered together with the oil. Oh man, yeah, that's very tasty. Mm. Oh yeah, that's a tasty, crispy, oily breakfast, but yeah, very good. And I love the, I mean, Moroccan mint tea with all the herbs, with the sage in there, with the mint, the fresh herbs just take the tea to another level. Ah. Oh yeah. What a way to begin the morning in Marrakesh. Conveniently, literally right next door, the neighbor, we're gonna try our next food. We're stopping here to eat something called bisara, which is a fava bean soup. And at first I thought, I mean, it almost looks like a porridge, like a wheat or a rice porridge because it's so white in color. But as soon as he starts scooping it out, you can smell the aroma of the fava beans. So I think maybe the skins are removed so that you've only got that fleshy interior of the fava beans to make into a puree of porridge. Oh man, I love fava beans in all forms, shape. I mean, I love beans. Uh, so he dishes that out. He sprinkles in some cumin and then gives it a squirt of olive oil. You know, mix it with a spoon. Uh -huh. But to be honest, we as locals, we prefer to mix it with the bread. Like this. Ah, okay. There you go. And you eat it. All right. <laughs> That's a great tip, though, from Fatima to mix it with the bread, stir in that olive oil, the cumin. Oh, it's a really kind of a soupy consistency, not too, not too thick. Well, thick, but it's soupy at the same time. Mm. Mm. Well, yes. Yep. I love fava beans in all forms, <laughs> shapes, and sizes. Yeah. Yeah. In all different formations. Yeah, it's really starchy and thick. Just the flavor of the cumin. I like how it's not salty at all. Just relying on the yeah. the, the hardiness of the, the fava beans. Exactly. It's pretty the it's pretty mild, but it's mm -hmm. uh, it's filling. It does need some chili. Oh, we got chili powder here. <coughs> I'll add some more cumin while we're at it. and then you can take the bread, stir it up. And try to scoop up as much as possible. 
Mm. Mm. Simple, hearty, warming. I think it's the simplicity too that just makes it really good. Maybe a little more chili on this. Excellent breakfast. I mean, straight up a, like a beans porridge. the next place on Marrakesh Food Tour, and it's kind of a pastry shop. They have sweets and breads, but then they're also famous for their juices, their smoothies, their fruits. So Zeze will be like an avocado smoothie. So with a little bit of fruit, a little bit of like chocolate and biscuits on top, it's locals like heavy, like favorite heavy snack actually to eat like outside. Okay. It's really nice, you'll love it. Whoa, and here it is. Okay, so here we go, what a creation. At the bottom, blended avocado and some fruits in a smoothie formation, but then the real highlight here of the Zaza is the topping, which can also include cookies, include chocolate wafers and all sorts of things, but we went with more of the natural version with a variety of fruits, with nuts, with raisins and dried fruits on the top as well, nice. Yeah, so you kind of, oh man, almonds, walnuts. Grab some of that on the top there. Oh, it's really foamy from that avocado as well. Oh. Mmm, mmm. Oh yeah, man, the, the foaminess of the avocado. It's so creamy. Oh, it is. I think the avocado is blended with milk. But it takes on a, a real creaminess, a real foaminess. Um, but at the same time, like really, really light, really airy and puffy. And then, yeah, the flavor of the avocado, the flavor of the milk. And then you've just got those fruits in there, the nuts in there too, which are really nice. Mmm. And, I mean, it's so thick and foamy that I don't think you need a, a straw, only eaten with a spoon. So we're going actually to our next stop, which is right next door. Oh, nice. Where we're gonna have like a little bit of the junk food, like what people have in the street. Cause you know, like at home, it's like we cook tagines, we cook other stuff. But like when we are outside, we prefer more like to eat something different. Uh, the one that we're gonna try right now, which is a mixed sandwich, actually. And you'll figure out what I mean by the mixed sandwich when we go there. So it's mid-morning now in Marrakesh. Streets are starting to pick up, markets are opening, and very conveniently, we're literally going two shops over to eat the next food. Oh, I can smell it. Oh man, that smells so good. Oh, and we've got kefta, chicken, sausages. Oh man, so it's called Che Omar, yes. <laughs> What a friendly man. And this aroma just fills the entire street with the aroma of his sizzling meat. He has a big iron griddle. There's kapta sausages. There's little meatballs. There's chicken, all seasoned with his, his own spice mixture. You really smell the cumin in there, a little bit of turmeric. Seasoned, sprinkled with parsley. And then on the other side, he has sausages. He has a mountain of onions, which are just slowly sauteing until they start to disintegrate and melt into the sauce. And then he continually just kind of sprinkles on, dusts it with spices, with cumin, gives it a little spray of oil to keep it hydrated, and just continues to, to sizzle it over the grill. <laughs> Here we go. Man, it's fully loaded. Oh man, it's all packed into a bun with a little sausage at the top. Oh, I can't wait. This is so good. All right. Oh. Oh yes. Oh wow. 
He's the man. Che Omar. Yeah, yeah. Che Omar over there is the man. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, man, it's so dizzy. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no processed food, no ketchup, no mayonnaise, no extra fancy sauce. Very simple. All slow grilled over that hot grill. I love the fresh crunch of the fresh onions in there, along with the melting caramelized onions, the kafta, the minced meat, the chicken in there. Those little sausages, I mean, it's all in there. And the bread kind of, the bread is a little bit sweet to contrast the saltiness, I think, of the, of the meat. Um, again, the flavor of the cumin, chili pepper, paprika, coriander in there. Fish herbs, yep. And the tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Mm. 54 years. He's been making it for 54 years. 54 years. They, they what a it. legend. Wow. No. A must-eat sandwich in Marrakesh. It's so good. It's so warming. Wow. Again, that the contrast of textures and meats all in, mm. all just combined into a, a bun is spectacular. You know what? I think he has the ratio down perfectly. I mean, 50 years of experience, his ratio of everything together mixed into a bun is perfect. Wow. Mm. Mm. Mmm. What a sandwich. Cooked perfectly. A perfect spice blend. He has it down to a science. So uh, he's created a masterpiece of a sandwich. I mean, slow smoldering sausage, meat, onions, parsley, and spices. Doesn't get better than that. Che Omar, shukran, shukran, shukran. We are continuing with this food tour down another market lane where you can buy just about everything from leather goods to souvenirs to daily necessities and spices. And of course, we have a lot more Moroccan food to keep on eating. Break the ice a little bit with what we call the pomegranate juice, actually. My like, famous word, why? Which is a mixture of like sweetness and sourness at the same time. It's locals' favorite like natural juice that you don't need like any sugar to add to it or anything like that. This is the king of juices, pomegranate juice. I mean, around the world, it's one of the great juices of the world because of its perfect balance of sweet and sour. And he just, I mean, he has a mountain of pomegranates all ready to go. He has them chopped up here, but then he literally, I mean, per cup, he just hand squeezes it. It's as fresh as possible right out of the, the pomegranate fruit. Oh, even some of the seeds come through, so it has some texture. Man, yeah, there's nothing like pomegranate juice. It really is the king of juices. Mm. So pure, so fresh, cool, just naturally cool. Yeah, that's sweet, that sourness. Even it has a little bit of a natural saltiness, I think, to it, and a little bit of a natural bitterness as well coming from those seeds. But that's as fresh as possible. The fresh squeeze of pomegranate. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. It's one of the greatest of all juices in the world. Very good, thank very you. Good. Very nice, very nice. Yes, shukran. <laughs> Can you show him? It's aphrodisiaco. Oh, it is. Oh, aphrodisiaco. <laughs> I think I can, I think I get the translation. <laughs> okay, shokran. Shokran. Thank you very much. Yes. That was extremely refreshing. And we were in a little square in the back there and now we're going down another alley. Filled with carpets, blankets, textiles. Something that I love so much about Morocco and the Medinas, the old cities of Morocco, is that they're still so much alive. I mean, they're historical, they're ancient, and yet they're real cities where people live. And you can find everything tucked within the Medinas and the old centers. And so, uh, just passing through one of the local markets, well, basically everywhere is a market, but here's more of the food, the fresh vegetables, the fresh fruits, uh, everything that's in season right now. like a local market for uh, the food only. We have a bunch of like local restaurants, as you can see. Uh, like the first stop in the food market will be the beans, actually. He's like one of the best beans makers, by the way. Slow cooked with some paprika, garlic, preserved lemon, and just like the best of the best of the spices that we have in Morocco that we're about to have. Yeah, and I think I've probably mentioned my love for beans a number of times also today, but throughout many videos. So. We're about to eat more beans. Oh man, can't get enough beans. Garlic, is it here? First dip. And a 
harissa. I'll dip in the harissa. And then like this. Garlic with the beans. <laughs> and eat it. Mm. So good. Trust me. The best beans you can ever find. <laughs> okay, let's follow yeah. Fatima's style with yeah. the the bread. Oh, yeah. This is a unique garlic I can see. Yeah, it's like, it was confit in the olive oil. Oh man. Yeah. You can actually just squeeze it out like like a paste. Yeah. It's like garlic paste almost. You can squeeze it out yeah. into your beans. Wow. Okay. Then dip in the harissa, dip into the beans with that garlic paste. Scoop on with your thumb. Oh, wow, yes. Whoa. You're in love with Whoa. beans? <laughs> yes, I am in love with beans. <laughs> but that garlic, oh, that's what takes it to the next level. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Now the head is also. Mm. Mm. With the flavor of the preserved lemon. Oh, yeah. The melt in your mouth white beans. The olive oil. That really slow stew that everything melts mm. in your mouth. Mm. But the flavor of that garlic is just what's blowing my taste buds at the moment. That is so good. And the company with the honey size. Mm. Mm. Outstanding. The garlic. <laughs> the beans just totally melt. Like, yeah. It's actually creating a, almost a bean sauce. Yeah, yeah, because they yeah. just, as you, as you dip in, the beans just totally dissolve. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whole feed garlic. Just squeezes out. Mm. Mm. So we've emerged from some of the busy lanes, and where are we at next? Exactly. So now we are like in the uh, olive market. You could just smell the aroma of the olives all the pickling, the brininess, the, the stages of the olives. So the olives are actually, they come from the same tree, by the way, but they are different stages. The first one is this one here. That's the first stage to the olives. The second stage is this one. Third, and the last one is the, uh, like, are the black ones. And when they get, like, older, actually, like, they become black, as you can see over there. So not just the olives, so the but also the So black olives are the most mature, exactly. the oldest, the oldest yes, olives. Exactly. So this, we call it msharmel. So like spiced, I would say, like uh, olives. So it has parsley, coriander, garlic, and olive oil. Here we go, let's we'll try the, the marinated olive. Mm. Mm. Man, I love olives. It has a nice saltiness, brininess, so much flavor. Uh, a little bit of a sourness, and then that marinade with the parsley on there, probably with some garlic. That's a tasty olive. So this one, it has lemon juice, oregano, and uh, garlic. Mm. 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 Really briny. A mm. little bit sour. Yeah. Mm. The garlic. Garlicky. Yeah, infused mm. with garlic, right? Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Very good. Man, that one's so good. So juicy, too. That's a world-class olive. This is the black olives with some olive oil and oregano as well. It's our favorite for breakfast with some olive oil, by the way. Yep. Mm. 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 Yep. Milder. Yep. It's milder yep. in flavor yep. than the green olive. Exactly. But really pleasant. Mm. Really nice to eat. Oh yeah. The oregano actually no, it's stronger yeah. in the black, yeah. on black olive. Oh, yeah. 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 Very good. The yeah. harissa, actually. Oh, excellent. Yeah, nothing but the harissa. And it has a little bit of, like, veggies in it, like pickles. I want to go for a nice green one. Okay, next olive with harissa. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, man, that's so good. The chili, again, with the harissa, you really taste the flavor of the preserved lemon, which I think is one of the great ingredients of Morocco. Shukran. Pickled chili. Mm. Mm. Oh, the complexity of flavor. Really nice, salty, briny. Has that nice chewiness. Mm. Very good. Excellent. Oh, nice. So we got three months and three years. Yeah. Preserved lemon. Just been eyeing those preserved lemons. And I mean, I think preserved lemons are one of the gems of ingredients in Moroccan cuisine, used in the harissa, used in certain dishes. 
but just the, and it's, so it's not a dry lemon, it's preserved in its, so it pickles, it kind of ferments. This one is uh, the three month old. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, sour, salty, so much good flavor. But then we're gonna try and contrast that with the darker one, which is three years fermented. Oh. Wow, that's a powerful flavor on its own. Mm, salty, the complexity has just built over the years. Oh man, it's good. It almost, I mean, it almost kind of uh, tingles a little bit, your tongue a little bit, because it's, it has that, that carbonation that's built up over time. Wow. The preserved lemons, amazing flavor. Oh man, yeah, that flavor of the preserved lemon might be on my mouth for the rest of the day, and I'm, I'm okay with that. We're moving on to the next place, and this is something extremely legendary. Yeah, this place so is extremely famous. Exactly, like, exactly. Place everybody's been here. Yep, yep. But it's this is one of the most famous restaurants yeah. in Marrakesh, right? Exactly. Very, like, right moment, by the way. Plenty over here. So we put everything in a pot, we shake it real good, we close it, and then we take it, like, underground to be cooked. It's one of our slow cooked that we uh, really love in America. It's America's specialty, by the way. So they use these sticks, by the way. Thank you very much. Oh, a little snack. Oh man, haven't even started yet and he's handed me a, handed me a snack. Some of the roasted lamb. Oh man, that is tasty and caramelized, salty. Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh man, that is the most amazing oven lamb pit you'll ever see. I mean, it's just loaded with a dozen lambs that are just skewered, that just go deep into that oven, and just that you can feel the heat. What an impressive technique, and I mean, you can, that, that's just such an incredible, just a, a well-rounded, just a convection heat that just comes from all sides. You just feel the, the immense heat coming from the mouth of the pit. Oh, there comes a whole lamb, just dripping in juices. Crispy, look at that skin, that juice. Oh. Just <laughs> pour you up. Oh, thank you, it's okay. Good. Not Very too good. Much. I think we can, Welcome we can in. handle it. <laughs> oh man. And they go to the front to serve up, to chop up, to serve up. Oh man, that is impressive. I mean, that's, that whole lamb he just pulls out of the oven is gigantic. It's so deep, it's a couple meters deep. And they just unearth the entire lamb just dripping in juices. Oh, half a lamb. All oh, the meat aromas are unbelievable. I'm serious. <laughs> Thank you. No way. No way. Oh, oh, and he's feeding me a bite. Oh. It's for you, but it's very hot. Oh. This is shoulder. Oh wow, he just pulled the bone out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it just literally slid out. Oh man, all that melts in your mouth. We're right up here in the action. He's slicing. There's literally a pool of lamb fat and oil on the chopping board. The amount of juices is unbelievable. The crispy lamb. Oh man, that is so good. <laughs> And we're, it's an honor. Thank you, it's an honor to meet the owner here who is, he is a legend. Thank you, shukran, shukran. Oh. Thank you, shukran, shukran. Thank you very much. Oh, it's an honor to be here. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you. 
Dipped in the lamb juice and oil. Oh man! One of the unique things is that that type of bread, right? Which they then soak into the lamb juice, and exactly. literally it absorbs, sponges up, gets the oil, the juice of the lamb, just totally saturated, so it's wet and soggy with lamb juice. And what do we have here? This uh, is cumin and salt. Okay, so you, yeah. you sprinkle on yeah. your own yeah. cumin, your own salt. Yeah. Exactly. Look at the crispiness of that skin. We can't talk any longer. We just taste this first. Okay. Oh man! Wow. Oh wow! Mm. Thank you. Mm. It's so juicy. Mm. It's so crispy. Mm. Man, yeah, that's extraordinarily tasty. Oh, yeah. The freshness. I think. I mean, the way they the oven bake it, it just seals in all of the the yeah. fat. That's a like lamb candy. Oh, yeah. oh man. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it just melts on your mouth. Oh, yeah. That's just a soggy, wet mess of bread. Like literally you could you could just wring it out and the oils would just start to drip out. Use that to pick up some of more of the the lamb. Oh just melts the fat. Oh that's still hot. Okay. There we go. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Wow. It's one of those bites where you immediately feel like you're, mm. you're wearing lip gloss <laughs> because of the, the lamb fat. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. That soggy bread. That's the greatest soggy bread you'll ever have. Normally, when you say soggy bread, it's not something that's attractive. But, but here, it's very attractive. <laughs> the meat, the fat, the skin. Oh. Mm. It just remains totally pure as well. I mean, the only seasoning is a bit of cumin, but that's all. Not overpowering. Yeah, you don't need any yeah. 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 Just cumin and salt. It's relying on the flavor of the, yeah. the natural flavor of the, the lamb, lamb. Yeah. and the smokiness that comes through. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and it's really good when you dip it directly into that cumin. Yeah. That way you get that immediate burst of almost a citrusy cumin flavor that just adds to the, the natural flavor of the lamb. Oh, happiness. Oh, look down below here. It's just swimming, swimming in its own fat. Look at the tenderness of it. Wow. Oh, man. It melts in your mouth. Oh, I mean, this place, I mean, this restaurant, we were lucky to be here when the owner is here. This place is an absolute institution, legendary. Um, Muhammad was telling me that some of the, the world's most famous people have dined here, have, yep. have been through here when they come to Marrakesh. Exactly. Um, yep. the, um, everyone from the Queen of England oh, yeah. Yeah. to Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay, yeah. Chef yeah. Phil, uh, Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, some of the YouTubers, many celebrities actually around the world came in here. Uh, uh, Lamin Haj Mustafa actually uh, was a cook in the royal palace here in Marrakesh. Uh, so oh, when the, the owner, king, the owner, exactly, like that. when okay. the king actually uh, used to come here to Marrakesh, mm -hmm. he will be one of the cooks in his royal ah. palace. Yeah. Well, I mean, not only is this restaurant outstanding food, but it has so much history. Again, yeah. it's a it's an absolute Marrakesh institution. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good oh, it's one. crispy too. Oh, thank you. All right, that's good. So it's crispy on the edges. A little dip in that cumin. Mm. Mm. like a waterfall of lamb juice in your mouth with every bite. The bread squeezing out the meat itself. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's extraordinary. It's 
very tender and juicy. Yeah, and fatty and it is. Very rich, yeah. Oh man, and your fingers will just be totally oiled and glistening and absolutely must wash that down with tea to help in the digestion. Man, this place is just unbelievable. It is packed and congested. Oh man, oh. This has got to be one of the great lamb alleys of the world. Oh, that was incredible. Whew. Oh, the meat sweats. Success. Is that... And Mohammed is up there. <laughs> so that's the next spot. That would be for the Tanjia. Okay, now this is for the, the tagine. Yeah, that's for the tagine. That's the tagine. Thanks. Oh, vegetables. The tangia. Oh. And what's the what's inside? Is it lamb? Beef. beef. It's beef. Okay. It's a beef tangia. Beef tangia. Yeah. It's gonna end. Yeah. yeah. Right there. Oh, it's bubbling. We're stopping, we're at our next place. This is a restaurant actually on the upper floors overlooking yep. the Medina, the old center of Marrakesh. Yep. And I mean, there's a, a couple of dishes that you absolutely also, I mean, along with everything that we've eaten today, that you can't miss when you come to Marrakesh. And so what do we have on the table now? Oh yes, we have, of course, the famous tangia. This is the signature dish of Marrakesh, actually. It's the sister of the tajin. <laughs> we call it tangia. It can be beef. It can be lamb, it can be goat, it can be chicken, it can be just beans. Uh, one of the signature dishes of this restaurant, this is a rabbit tagine. Let's go in. Let's dive into it. <laughs> oh, look, you can just press it. You can just press it and it just flakes apart, falls apart the beef. Oh. Look at the tenderness of that. I do want to do a little scraping on the bottom of oh, that yeah, of course. to soak juices. it up, yeah. soak up the juice and yeah. oil. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Mm. Another melt in your mouth meat dish of Marrakesh. Mm. Oh, wow. And I think when it braises in that clay pot, everything mingles together. Yep. The, yeah. the, the, even the flavor of the spices taste toasted. Like yes, toasted, exactly. Like, Everything like yeah. smoky. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The toji actually is uh, cooked in uh, the ashes, like the last stage of the charcoal, mm. when it's like just gray and mm. warm, uh, and it usually cooks overnight. Overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why it just totally breaks down the muscle oh, yeah. of the beef. Part the head. Moving into some of that, grab some of that rabbit meat. Oh man, really stringy, stringy. I do wanna also dip up into all that, that sauce, the gravy, the onion disintegrating, onions and raisins. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm, the fruity sweetness of the raisins. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. Oh man, and the rabbit is just so tender. Yeah, just like chicken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Mm. Flavors so just keep on coming. So good. Yeah. Mm. And again, I mean, I'll say this, I'll repeat this over and over again in Morocco, but the, the braising in the tagine just, whatever goes into there just melts, yeah. comes together, okay. a fusion of all the flavors. And yet they all remain separate. Yeah, they all just collapse and disintegrate in your mouth all at the same time. Get this, if you lift this up. Oh, it's a puddle of rabbit juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can, that's a, you'd want to scrape that up right there. Oh, oh. Oh, 
Amen. Mm. Oh, Amen. Oh. Mm. Oh, wow. It's very caramelized. Mm. Yeah. Tender. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that kind of burnt bit. Mm. Well, not really burnt, but just because of the sugars of the raisins, oh, yeah. that yeah. caramelization yeah. effect yeah. happens. Mm. Oh, wow. Man. Wow. oh, that's like that's like onion rabbit jam for your bread. <laughs> <laughs> rabbit jam. Rabbit jam. Rabbit jam. <laughs> That's a straight, straight rabbit bite. Mm. Man, the raisins just disintegrating, liquefying the onions. Mm. Oh, it is really, really tasty. Also have lentils, harissa. And then the Moroccan salad with tomatoes, onions, coriander. Proven combination. Kayang. A mixture of cold milk, hot milk, lemon, sugar, and vanilla. We put everything in a container. We keep shaking it for about 30 minutes, so like half an hour, until it gets a little bit thick. And then we wrap it in a warm blanket, and then we'll leave it to rest for about 48 hours. And then we put it in the fridge, and it's ready to be served. This is how we do it at home. The name of the yogurt is Raib. Here. Oh, I'm going to try this, the Raib. Yeah. Oh, so it's a, it is a yogurt? Yogurt, very soft. Yeah. Right. Yep. Mm. At first it's sour and then it's sweet. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Mm. Mm. It's very light. Very light. Yeah. It, yeah. Almost it's like it. a silken tofu. Oh yeah. But uh, yep. a nice acidity to it. And it, it I like how it's not too sweet. Yep. Just yep. a good, a yeah, good sweetness. A nice amount of sweetness. Yep. It's refreshing. Again, a huge thank you to all of my friends from Moroccan Food Tours. They arrange uh, day trips or full tours. This wouldn't have been possible without them. I'll have all their information in the description box below. And also, make sure you stay tuned. We are traveling all around Morocco, eating some of the best Moroccan food you're not going to want to miss. So make sure you stay subscribed um, and keep watching this entire Moroccan food tour. But Marrakesh, what an incredible city. Uh, it's so full of life and so many delicious foods to eat. That's going to be it for this video. I want to say a huge thank you for watching. Please remember to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And again, subscribe for all the Moroccan food coming up.